they somebody struck up the idea of going over there, and so I, I obliged. I remember when I was a freshman, and I don't remember who told me about the place, and I don't remember what they said exactly. I was taken there at 1 a.m. by a person I just met. I thought it was interesting that there were a lot of places in the area and then along the side of the road. I think it's Route 40, just this house or like sculpture studio building had just been abandoned there. I could tell he was kind of an oddball. He seemed very countercultural, but in a sort of a quaint way. Like we were just friends, but eventually, you know, we did. I didn't want to get involved with anybody, but he was the nicest, kindest man that I had ever met. And I thought, well, this is a good guy. I'll, you know, spend some time with him. Kind of repeated the same story of like, oh, this is an abandoned artist, the girl that the house of an artist who died probably tragically because that's what that's what would make the best story and you know um i continued on the the myth there were just rumors going around about this guy's crazy yard he had all these sculptures out and I heard, i'd hear stories about people going at night and sneaking into his house i didn't see a lot you know uh there's not much remaining it had su i think his art suffered the most from the you know, the time between his death and now. It, uh, and so basically he was self-taught and he was a welder by trade. He built fences and commercial things. He, he, he thought that Conway could be sort of like an artist haven if, if they just tried and the community was more accepting of it. And I think he saw what they were doing is like trying to prime Conway to accept public art and, and see a need for uh, artists in the community. The sculptures he's got, you know, what few sculptures remain are just bizarre. It's, uh, it's very spooky. I mean, you go, especially at night when it's hard to tell what things are, there's just these nine to 12 foot tall humanoid figures reaching for you. It was interesting to me that it looked like it had been abandoned for a long time. And there were like these beautifully designed sculptures that just had pieces missing. It kind of had like a ghost town vibe, even though it was a single place. One person like uh, crawled through and then let us out and unlocked the door on the front. I mean, just all, it was this weird mixture of like his professional, you know, his art, and then also like his toothbrush and his nail clippers. I got the sense that he, maybe he couldn't take care of himself, he couldn't take care of this property anymore, it just wasn't sustainable. And for one reason or another, he had to go away always so amazed that, you know, guns, and we could talk about guns, and, but we couldn't talk about love and sex and the penis and anatomy. So that was kind of one of his themes through his art. There was just such a layer of dust and the destruction of everything. Not necessarily destruction, but nothing was in its place. You know, books were thrown around on the floor. There's, in his office, there was just this pile of mail that probably was like four feet across or something. It was very voyeuristic, but um, it, I mean, I think everyone's kind of curious about stuff like that. He was on good terms with his sons. I think he lived with Eric in the last days of throat cancer. He had throat cancer, and that's what was going Never smoked a cigarette in his life, but I, my theory is the um, welding, the fumes and all from the welding had to have had an effect on that. It was quick. Yeah. It was really quick. Um, it seems like, you know, you heard that he had cancer, then all of a sudden he was gone. Well, because, you know, when he first died, uh, I guess people were going over there, and when I first heard about it, I didn't really put it together 
that he was a person. It was just like, oh, it's some crazy guy's like eccentric like uh, workshop, uh, and he's almost like a cartoon character, I guess. Went there and sort of got, I guess, got to know who he was from his, his the belongings that he left behind. He's more of a real person, I guess, now to me. Never was as recognized as he maybe should have been.